A second type of design we have is the matched pairs design. This is an experimental design in which the experimental units are paired up. The pairs are selected so that they are related in some way. Um, one of the ways that this happens the most frequently is actually the same person measured twice. Right? So you're matching up with yourself. You create a pair of results from your own self. Um, twins, right? married couples, etc. So you're matching a pair up to, with each other. There are only two levels of treatment in a matched pairs design. Before, after. Right. The first twin, the second twin, the first spouse, the second spouse. That's it. So there's always just those two levels of treatment. All right. So let's look at this example because, of course, it'll all make more sense with an example. Xylitol has proven effective in preventing dental caries, i.e. cavities, when included in food or gum. A total of 75 Peruvian children were given milk with and without xylitol and were asked to evaluate the taste of each. The me researchers measured the children's ratings of the two types of milk. Okay, so the response variable is right there. They're talking about the children's ratings of the two types of milk. So that would be the response variable. Basically, they want to stick the xylitol in the milk and not have the students or not have the kids notice. Oops, I ran out of space to write this. All right. Think of some factors in the study. Which are controlled and which factor is manipulated? Um, all right. So let's think about some things that we're trying to control. They're all from the same country, right? So their country is being controlled. Um, one would imagine they're probably giving to them all around the same age, right? So let's think here. Some factors. Let's start with that. Factors would be, let's see, country, um, age, gender of the children, um, their culture, their background. Oh, so many things, <laughs> right? So I'll just leave it, et cetera. There's a lot of things about kids that we can measure. Now, what factor is controlled? That would be the country, right? Because it tells you they're all Peruvian children. So the country is what's controlled for, right? They made it so that all the um, children are from the same country. All right, now what's being manipulated well, the factor that's being manipulated is the milk with and without xylitol, which is another factor, actually, I, I could put up here. So the milk, I'll just say milk. <laughs> I'll just put it right in there. So that's another one. Right. So that's what we're manipulating for these children. The thing we're changing is the milk with and without xylitol. I guess I could just say milk. You know what? I'm just going to say that. The milk is what's being manipulated. Right? That's the part that's changing. Okay. Which, don't even get me started. Milk, you could start going into the cows, and milk tends to be a local product. So um, the cows that make the milk, the grass that's feeding the cows, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All of those are factors that could be affecting this. Um, so I, I'll even add those things in. Cows the grass, the local grass, right? That affects the taste of milk, et cetera, <laughs> right? So actually, um, factors controlled, probably the milk is controlled as well. They're probably making it all the same type of milk and they're just doing with and without xylitol. So I would argue that milk, cows, grass is probably controlled for, again, by having it all in Peru. Milk products um, tend to be local because milk will spoil if you try to ship it for long distances. So if you notice in your local um, refrigerator cases in your local grocery store, they're all milk that's from pretty much close to around where you live. Um, and then it, if you cro drive across the country, you'll notice it changes. <laughs> and that's because milk is still a very local product. All right. So what are the treatments? Um, that was, there were two treatments, right? How many treatments? So how many is easy? How many was two? So we call those levels, right? There's two levels of the treatment. Right there, so two. And the two levels of treatment were, there was milk with xylitol. 
and milk without xylitol. All right, now how are factors that are not controlled for, like age, gender, culture, background, all that stuff, how are they manipulated or dealt with? Well, we don't really know because they didn't tell us explicitly. However, we have a pretty good guess. It's probably random, random assignment. Because otherwise, if you get all the kids from the same area or the same background, etc., then that's not really great. So what you do is you have a random assignment. So you're going to get random ages, random genders, etc. So you'll have, you know, an even split of, you know, male, female, for example. And then you'll have, you know, a whole bunch of different ages. Or if you're only interested in this age group, then that's what you'll have. Now, this is a matched pairs design because they're having the same kids drink both milk with and milk without. So that's totally match pairs. Matter of fact, I will circle that. Milk with and milk without. It's the same children, right? So that is matched pairs. That's a before and after thing. So matched, Oop, not mapped. I'm teaching math, but that's not the same thing. Matched pairs as a design. And the subjects would be those 75 Peruvian children. All right, now we want to draw a diagram to illustrate this. All right, so we have our group right here. So group, it's one group of 75 Peruvian children. And then what you do is you don't want them all to have the milk with xylitol first and then all have the milk without xylitol first. That would be unfair. So what you do is you randomly assign those two. So you have milk with xylitol, milk without xylitol. So you randomly assign milk with xylitol and then milk without xylitol. And then you have them reverse it, right? So then they take milk with xylitol, or excuse me, without xylitol and milk with xylitol. Oops, I had to make these as big as I needed to. Milk without xylitol and milk with xylitol. And I guess it'd be better for me to put and say the random assignment's kind of here when you randomly select them for those groups because you're randomly assigning who's going to get to get the milk with xylitol first versus who's going to get the milk without the xylitol first. So it's really back at these arrows that you're doing that. And then you're going to come back together and compare results. Um, ratings of the two milks. Now there's not really much difference in here, but what's happening is just that when you separate it, you're separating into two groups. So either they take it with xylitol first or they take it without xylitol first. And then their second one would be the opposite. And then they'll compare their ratings, right? So the reason you don't have all the kids take it with xylitol first is just maybe that will be biased in some way. So by randomly assigning that, you're eliminating that bias of taste, say, or flavor on your tongue. Now the last type of experimental design is the randomized block design. This is when you group together similar homogeneous experimental units and then randomly assign the experimental units within each group to a treatment called blocking. Each group of homogeneous individuals is called a block. So a randomized block design is an experimental design in which the experimental units are divided into homogeneous groups called blocks and with each block the experimental units are randomly assigned to treatments. Okay.
So let's see an ex example because this is confusing otherwise, right? So suppose we conduct a study to design reaction time to a stimulus of sleep deprived individuals. To do the study, we identify 100 individuals between the ages of 20 and 29. 50 of the individuals are assigned to a control group and 50 are assigned to an experimental group. The individuals in the control group are allowed to sleep eight hours before the study, while the individuals in the experimental group are kept up all night. Other variables that are thought to affect reaction times are controlled and fixed at a single level. Food intake in the morning of the test or age of the individuals. Variables that are not controlled are dealt with through randomization. So they randomize everything else. The following morning, all 100 individuals are given a test where they push a button upon seeing a red light on a screen. The time needed to push the button was recorded. Because it is possible that reaction time differed by gender, it would make sense to block by gender. So let's say we have 60 females and 40 males in our study. We should randomly assign 30 of the females to the control group and 30 females to the experimental group. Also randomly assign 20 males to the control group and 20 males to the experimental group. Draw a picture of this design. Okay, now in a randomized block design, where you start off is with the blocks. And you'll see they're talking about, hey, we're gonna block by gender, see that? So it makes sense to block by gender. So that means that we have two blocks. We have block one, which is the 60 females. And then we have block two, which is the 40 males, right? So you have your group of 100 people getting placed into these two blocks. It's not random, they're, they're being blocked on purpose into these two groups, right? So that you have your 100 people being put into these two groups. All right, then what happens? Well, then you do your treatment, right? So you randomly assign, the random assignment's here, so you're going to say, hey, you get the treatment and you, or you get the, I don't remember, the control group. So you get to sleep eight hours or you get to be experimented on, right? So you have your treatment of staying up all night. Or you have your control group. This is the group that gets to sleep. right? There's the treatment, there's the control. This is where the randomness comes in. And then you do the same thing with the other block. So the other block gets a treatment, and this is the random assignment. So they have a treatment of being up all night. and then they have a control. So you've blocked them into two groups and then you administer the treatment along that or the control to each of those two subgroups of those blocks. And then you actually compare here so the comparison is here. You compare reaction times among all the women, and then you compare reaction times among all the men. So let's go back real quickly. It says an experimental design in which the experimental units are divided into homogeneous groups. See that? Homogeneous groups called blocks. So if you look down below, that's the block right here. The blocks are the homogeneous groups. Homogeneous means everybody's alike. They're all similar, right? So this group is similar to itself and this group is similar to itself. And then within each block, they are randomly assigned to treatments, right? So within all the females, the random assignment's here, not back here as it was in the other two designs, but it's, it's up here, right? And then you randomly assign treatment control, treatment control. If there was more than one treatment, like treatment one, treatment two, you would do that in here. And then you compare amongst all the women and you compare amongst all the men. That's a randomized block design.